guys. It's Friday. Um, we are going to finish chapter 12. We are almost to the end of our book. Next week, we just have two chapters left, but we're going to finish chapter 12 and we're going to find out if Jonathan is going to be able to save trouble. <clears throat> For an instant, Jonathan could feel trouble's terror, making his own muscles go limp, could feel the great heart slamming against his own ribs. Trouble hadn't meant to kill Mama Goose. A bear didn't understand killing. He understood noisy and quiet. He understood hungry and full. He understood lonely. So now Jonathan's doing that thing that he does um, where he goes into the body of the animal and he's feeling what it's like to be trouble and he's understanding. He's understanding that this young bear was feeling hungry, was feeling lonely, was feeling annoyed, but was not intending to kill Mama Goose. Trouble had to be lonely. Why else was he using up so much energy digging into the zoo just to be near Jake, and now his loneliness was going to get him killed? But he, Jonathan, could help. Even if his father thought he couldn't, he could stay right here and head Trouble back toward the adults with their tranquilizer gun. The bear hadn't touched him the night they had met nose to nose on the deck. Surely he wouldn't hurt him now. So remember, Jonathan's already ran into him once when he lured him onto the deck. So now he's being brave or silly, stupid. I don't know <laughs> what his exactly what's going on in his mind, but he's he's thinking that he can do it. Checking to make sure none of the adults had come far enough along the path to be able to see him, Jonathan stepped over the low wooden fence at the edge of the path and darted into the shadow of the trees. Once there, he stopped to take a deep breath and look around carefully. There was a brownie in these woods and he could be anywhere. Jonathan knew about bear attacks. Brownies are often more aggressive than black bears, but very few of them will attack a human. All they want to do is get out of the way, but even if it's only one bear out of 10 that will, or one out of a hundred, your luck runs out when you meet up with a bear that attacks you. And Trouble was going to be scared and running for sure. He could react to anything in his path the way he'd reacted to Mama Goose. So he's trying to be brave and be calm and be confident, but he knows, I mean, it is a bear. It's a wild bear. Um, so there is, there is definitely the possibility that he could get hurt. <clears throat> What was it they told you to do if a brown bear attacked you? Play dead? That was it. Fight a black bear, play dead with a brownie. Cover your, the back of your neck with your hands, pull your knees up to protect your belly, and just lie there and hope the bear will go away. So you guys can try that. You can practice that. Do, um, do what he says here. It says, you lie on the ground, cover the back of your neck with your hands, like this. Pull your knees up to protect your belly, and just lie there and hope the bear goes away. So you guys can all um, practice doing that, practice playing dead. A shiver rattled through his body, but Jonathan ignored it and moved deeper into the trees. So that shiver, that's that uh, sort of warning inside his body, but he ignores that and keeps going into the trees. Just as the adults couldn't see Trouble because the stands of trees was so dense, they wouldn't be able to see him either. And Trouble had to be lurking in here somewhere. <coughs> Jonathan's senses were strung so taut that he felt as though he might explode. His senses being strung so taut, it means he is just right on the edge. Like his senses are kind of hyper-focused and he is feels like he might explode. He is so tense. <clears throat> and it was in that state of hyper-awareness that he stepped around a large bush and found himself face to face with the brown bear. For an instant, he couldn't breathe. He wondered if Trouble might be having difficulty breathing too. The animal just stared with those small, dark eyes and neither of them made a sound. Beyond the trees from the path, Jonathan could no longer see. He could hear the adults. They were walking, calling to one another, coming closer. Trouble heard them too. The brownie swung his great head this way and that, apparently looking for a way to escape. So he's looking around, 
He's trying to figure out what to do. Not this way, Jonathan thought. You can't go this way. And he began to jump up and down, waving his hands in front of Trouble's face and shouting, Go, he cried. Go, Trouble. Get out of here. So that's where the title of our chapter came from. Remember, chapter 12 was titled, Go, Trouble. And that's what he's saying. Go, Trouble. Get out of here. So now we're going to see, um, we're going to go back to what's going on with the bear. The young bear stood rooted to the ground, amazed at the noise issuing from the, from the boy. Humans were coming from behind, too. He could hear their footsteps and their voices. He could smell them. But directly in front of him was the smaller one he had seen before, the one he associated with the loaf of bread that he had eaten, and noise was pouring out of his mouth. So you remember what happened last time that the bear encountered something noisy, right? When the bear snuck into the zoo the first time and Mama Goose was making all that noise, what happened to her? And Jonathan knows that. He witnessed it. So now here's Jonathan jumping up and down making all this noise. <clears throat> Still, the voices coming from behind pushed at him. Trouble took another step toward the young one, but the boy held his ground. He kept yelling, kept flapping his arms up and down. Trouble stepped forward one more time, expecting the boy to give way. Still, the young one continued his infuriating dance. For an instant, Trouble went completely still, caught, suspended. Then, trapped between the noise behind and the noise in front of him, he flattened his ears and popped his jaw in warning. Incredibly, the boy only yelled louder. I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine being Jonathan standing there nose to nose with the bear. The bear is coming toward him. The bear is flattening his ears back, just like his mom had done in warning. He's snapping his jaws. And here's Jonathan still holding his ground, still dancing and waving his arms and shouting, Go, Trouble! <coughs> the confusion of humans on every side was too much. His grief and loneliness, his hunger and pain were too much. And the human who bounced in front of him was no match for the power he knew resided in even a single swipe of his great paw. Trouble lifted one paw ready to lunge, to strike. The boy stopped jumping, stopped shouting, but still he didn't run away. He stood there and stared into Trouble's eyes as though he thought himself the bigger bear. The boy's stare unnerved Trouble. The bold stare combined with the voices moving up on from behind him, Trouble moaned, lifted his paw higher, moaned again. He was trapped. And all that stood between him and freedom seemed to be this scrap of a boy. So just like Jonathan was wrestling with some different thoughts and emotions earlier, now here's the bear. He's confused. Like, he's kind of annoyed. He kind of wants to swipe at the boy. But for some reason, he's not doing it. A noise came from the boy. This one soft, almost a whimper, and though he didn't know why he did it, the young bear lowered the paw he had intended to strike with, turned, and dodged away. He ran toward the ravine <clears throat> and the creek and the hole that he had dug beneath the two fences that enclosed the zoo. The bear had almost reached the first fence when he felt a sudden, sharp sting in his shoulder. So what is that sudden, sharp, sh sudden, sharp sting that he feels? What do you think happened? He twisted his head to snap at the thing that had penetrated his thick fur, his skin, his muscle. He snapped and missed, and then strangely, after he had run a bit farther, his legs didn't seem to belong to him any longer. So when he says his legs don't belong to him, that's meaning that he um, he's really not able to control them anymore. He's still wanting to run, but they're just not working. Um, he stumbled and struggled to stay upright. A liquid warmth stole through his entire body. So he's been shot with the dart, the tranquilizer dart. So it's just like a little dip, a little dart, a little needle that puts medicine into his body that's just gonna like sedate him and make him sleepy, but not kill him. As he went down, crashing into the brush, 
At the base of the ravine, he found himself staring up at the boy who had incredibly followed his flight. This was all he saw at the end. All he could remember was the boy. Hmm. So that is the end of chapter 12. We have two more chapters for next week. Chapter 13, which is titled A Lot Like Us, and chapter 14, which is titled Home. So you guys can think about um, your predictions for how you think this book is going to end. And I hope you have a very good weekend, and we'll finish the book on Monday.